Hi everyone, this is my new guitar, my Gibson CL20 Plus. I thought I'd make a video about this because A, it's a new guitar for me that I absolutely love. I've totally fallen in love with it. And also there's very little information I found um, online um, or anywhere about these guitars. So I thought it'd be good to give it a bit of coverage and a bit of love on YouTube. So I have a Sigma acoustic guitar which you'll see in other videos on on here that's been my main live guitar i'm still playing it live but it's quite a heavy guitar doesn't do my shoulder any favors on a longer gig so i was looking for something lightweight plus i've always really fancied a gibson every gibson acoustic i've ever played i've loved and not wanted to give back um i can't afford a j200 i can't afford a hummingbird i can't afford a j45 really even even used ones um so i'd kind of given up on the gibson thing and was just looking at other guitars and then i walked into a shop one afternoon and saw this on the wall it just come in that morning hadn't even made it to the shop's website yet i tried it spent about an hour playing it in store and thought i cannot leave the shop without this guitar it's pretty much everything i want it sounds amazing it plays beautifully it's got a bit of vintage vibe to it. It's a Gibson and it's unusual. It's a head turner. Whenever I've played this, people have asked me what it is. So what is it? Well, it's a CL20, CL20 standard plus CL standing for custom line. Gibson made the custom line range between 1997 and 1998. The serial number on this guitar tells me that it's from early 97. So it's one of the first ones. Um, I gather there was a bit of um, resistance from the Gibson management at the time because this guitar is quite a break from the Gibson tradition in terms of, sort of scale length, you know, body shape, just the type of acoustic guitar it is. So they were quickly discontinued, although the body shape has stayed around. First as a Gibson Songbird and then the Songbird range evolved into the Songwriter range, which is still available now and still very popular range. Um, so, yeah, they weren't around for very long, and consequently, you don't see many of them. There is a CL10, a 20, a 30, a 40, and a 50. The 50 is the top of the range, like the blingy one. There is a single cutaway version called the CL45, I believe, um, and this is the CL20. So, it's not quite the basic one, but sort of, you know, the lower, sort of near, kind of entry level sort of, sort of area. I had to Google this in the shop when I was playing it because I'd never come across it before. When I saw it, my first thought was, oh, it's a Gibson songwriter, but it's not. It's uh, something else that, I had, that I'd never heard of and never come across. So I did a bit of Googling whilst sitting there in the shop playing it, and there wasn't much information online about it. So I've, I've had to research it to find out a bit more about it. So like I say, made for two years only. Um, Sitka spruce top, solid Sitka spruce solid Sitka spruce top, rosewood uh, fretboard with snowflake inlays, rosewood um, bridge, um, very uh, distinctive bridge design that lives on in the songwriter now. It's got the abalone uh, rosette, it's got a artificial tortoise shell uh, binding, the back and the sides are mahogany. Uh, what's unusual about these guitars and probably quite un uh, Gibson like at the time is the fact that they have a, an arched back which if I move it in the light, you might be able to see an arched back for added protection. Now the Guild guitars, the D25, those kind of guitars, they have arched backs. So this is probably more in line with that type of guitar than it would be a traditional uh, Gibson type guitar, I guess. Um, the fact that it has no, that it has an arched back means there's no bracing on the back. I'm just trying to see if you can catch the light to see it. Probably not. No bracing on the back at all. And there's no, but there's bracing on the front. Now, some people say that the earlier models have got laminated mahogany back and sides. Some people say that they have solid um, uh, 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 mahogany back and sides. I don't know. I can't tell. I don't know if this is <laughs> solid or if it's laminate. The only thing I will say is the grain pattern on the inside, which I'm not even going to attempt to show you because you won't see it on the video. But the grain pattern on the inside seems to mirror the grain pattern on the back, which would suggest to me that it's um, solid. But who knows? And to be honest, who really cares? I, I'm not really bothered if it's solid or, or laminated or what. All I know is it sounds great. 
and I love it. And I think you can get a bit too het up on, you know, is it solid? Is it, as long as it's, it's a quality wood, then it's, you know, it sounds, it sounds great to me. I don't think, oh, I wish this was, sounded like a solid guitar. Might be solid, like I say, I don't really care. Um, so yeah, it's got a pickup inside, uh, which is a, a factory fitted pickup. It's got no controls or anything on it. It's just straight out of the back into the PA or the amp. Um, shop, I think had done a setup on it before I even came in. So it's got a nice setup, nice action, intonations all good. Sounds lovely. Um, very happy with that. Um, it's got a rim pitch, a Korg rim pitch sound hole tuner there, which I uh, put on, which just sticks in there. Um, so if you're wondering what that is, um, they're really good, actually. They're really good, accurate, uh, discreet tuners. I don't like um, the headstock tuners. They look a bit weird, I think. And I don't find them very accurate, whereas I think this this is the most accurate tuner I've ever come across. So a little a digression there into sound hole um, tuners. Um, so yeah, 1997, it's a, it's a fairly old guitar. It's like, you know, 25 years plus. I don't know who owned it before. I don't know if it's one single owner or if it was multiple owners, but whoever's owned it before has played it. They've really played it. They haven't abused it, but it shows the battle scars. It's got checking in the lacquer. It's got dings, scratches, marks, bruises, dents, all sorts. Chunk out the fretboard there. You know, it's 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 been played and it has battle scars to prove it. And I think that's great. Obviously, the more it's played, the more the wood will open up, the better it will sound. The fact that it's got all the dings and the scratches just gives it that sort of vibe of being a, like a workhorse guitar, which is clearly what it's been in its life and it's what it will continue to be with me. It will be a workhorse. It will be gigged heavily. I've already gigged it at every gig I've played since I've bought it. Um, and it's it's been absolutely spot on. So, yeah, I think it will continue to get the dings and the scratches and if it does get any more then who cares you know i'd be wary about taking a brand new pristine five grand guitar out to a pub gig not bothered about this one if it does if it gets another knock on it again who cares you know so yeah it's it's a lovely guitar it'll be with me forever a friend forever i think um i'll be playing it in my gig this weekend i'm not recorded with it yet i did my ep on my sigma but this one will be on the next EP for sure. And uh, yeah, I'm sure if you if you come and see me play live this summer or subsequently, you'll see this guitar in action. So there you go, the Gibson CL20 Standard Plus. If you've been looking for information on these, I hope I've you know, helped you with a bit of uh, information. And um, yeah, someone's trying to ring me, so I better go. Bye.